Definitely not Monday, June <laughs> July 2nd. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, looks like a fairly reasonable agenda. Uh, if there's any, if there isn't any additions, <coughs> I've got one addition. Okay. Um, Eden Specialty Ciders is looking for an outdoor consumption permit class four license for a pop up tasting shed up at Pete's Greens. Eden, who again? Eden Specialty Ciders. Up at Pete's Green. Yeah. Uh, is there a date for that? Well, you got to put it on the agenda first, and then we can oh, okay. get into yep. it. But. With that addition, would somebody approve the agenda, please? I'll move that we approve the agenda with that one addition. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Motion motion been made and seconded to approve the agenda. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, consent agenda items, just the minutes from the June 18th meeting. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the June 18th meeting. Second it, Nat? I'll second. Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Public, uh, there is none. <laughs> so, uh, the rest is up to you, Bill. <coughs> okay. Um, well, why don't we take care of the uh, consumption permit first? So, this came in today. Um, the select board really ought to give its blessing or not to it before uh, Beth can sign it. So Eden um, Ice Cider Company doing business as the Eden Specialty, Specialty Ciders is uh, evidently working with Pete Screens and they want a, um, a pop-up shed and a fenced-in seating area. Here's a aerial view of the map. Is that the shed that's out there by the roadside now? I haven't been up. I get off Route 100 as fast as I can. <laughs> really, so I, well, it's I, nice now. I haven't been up there. Um, so they are asking to be able to do this um, from July 1st to October 31st, inclusive. So it's every day until the end of October, um, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And uh, they will be providing um, I'm sure they'll be selling the class four license says application for a license um, to sell by the unopened container and to distribute by the glass with or without charge manufactured beverages uh, by the license under accordance to Title 17. So anyway, this is where they want to do it. Um, I don't know any more about it than just this. Beth uh, gave this to me this morning and uh, fenced area attached to wooden shed on lawn at Pete's Greens. And endless, you that endless you amount of uh, beer and cider producers yeah. continuing to pour into the state. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They've got the, the shed out there by the roadside now, and it's, it's facing in, so the service area would be in here. Yeah. I, mean, I don't see any reason nope. not to do it. Yeah. But. So having said that, would somebody love to make a motion? We'll 
get done. I'll make the motion that we approve the uh, request for Eden Specialty Ciders for Class 4 license at uh, Pete's Green in Waterbury. I'll second that. Okay. Is there any further discussion? If we all approve, say aye. 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 Okay, great, thank you. <laughs> Tax rate. So, um, what I'm going to hand out to you is more than likely going to be the tax rate. Um, if we get lucky, um, maybe the school tax rate will be lower. I doubt it. But um, as you know, the, you know the, a budget wasn't approved until Monday last week. In fact, it was probably Thursday by the time it became law because the governor didn't sign the bill. Um, and um, if he doesn't sign a bill, it comes into law within five days of passage or after five days of passage by the legislature. So the tax department has been um, pretty concerned that they weren't going to be able to get their work done and get the tax rates out. Typically, I get a form like this from the tax department that has the education tax and everything on there for the homestead and the non-residential rate. Uh, I did not get one like this today, and, and neither did Beth or Carla. Um, Dan Sweet, the appraiser, got an email from the tax department and forwarded it to me, so I have this information. Now, I was concerned because we all heard how the governor talked about uh, wanting to keep the tax rate level, and what happened was the non-residential tax rate stayed the same on a statewide basis, and the, uh, I mean, the residential homestead tax rate stayed the same on a statewide basis, and the non-residential tax rate increased by about 2.5% or so. Um, and the, the homestead rate is always adjusted. Um, there's two adjustments that happen with the homestead tax rate. So if the legislature set a rate at $1.54, um, what then happens is they look at the, um, the school spending in a particular town, and if it's 10% higher than the block grant that you would get if you sent set that tax rate, your tax rate gets adjusted and it goes up by that same percentage. And then they also adjust it by the common level of appraisal, and that is to equalize the taxes across the state. So our common level of appraisal um, is probably 98, it's 98 point something percent. So there is an adjustment. I was a little surprised, though, when I got the email from the state that the homestead rate is 7.1 cents higher than last year. It's $1.6183 as opposed to $1.5473, which it was a year ago. Um, Michelle Baker, the uh, business manager at the school, is on vacation until Wednesday this week. I know that. I emailed her and the superintendent because I want to make sure that they think this rate is so in the ballpark. Yeah. And, and the only factor that I'm wondering about is, you know, the legislature act, I can't remember, it's act 46 or 146, the consolidation. Mm -hmm. Remember, they held that carrot out that if you consolidate, you're going to get a discount on your taxes, and I think it was a five cents last year. And I know earlier this year there was talk about that they kind of, um, you know, played the shell game and that went away or went away partially. So I've emailed the superintendent and Michelle to say, do we have a, um, is this dollar sixty one eighty three correct? 
Um, I haven't heard yet. Uh, I, I'm almost certain it won't go any higher than this. If it, so what I want you to do tonight when you set the tax rate is to set a school homestead rate at no greater than $1.6183 and a non-residential rate at no greater than $1.6013. And then if some reason between now and Thursday when we print the tax bills, I find out that this is wrong, I can adjust it. Um, I think I'm holding out hope that is going to really be unfounded. I, th I think it, this is probably the right rates. But in case it's not, I'd like to have the flexibility to, to lower it if I can. Mm -hmm. So you, you're hoping for a credit, basically, based on this uh, merger. Uh, <coughs> right. So-called merger. Yeah, we consolidated. We consolidated, and I believe it was supposed to be a three-year um, benefit that your tax rate was going to get a benefit. And maybe it has. I mean, maybe it's baked into this number, but I just don't see it. Um, and I don't have the means to calculate. All I get is this email. Um, it's frustrating because I, I know the tax department wasn't happy that they had to wait because, you know, they, they didn't have the tax rate until Monday and only because they started working when the governor said, well, I'm not going to sign it, so you folks can go ahead and assume that it's, you know, five days will go by. So they started work on Monday. So they haven't had very long to do 246 different tax bills. So anyway, um, so right now, <coughs> the homestead rate is four and a half, almost 4.6% higher than it was last year, $1.6183. $1.5473 last year, the non-residential rate, $1.6013, and that's 4.67% uh, higher than last year. So there's not much we can do about that. If it's lower, I'll set the lower rate, but I think this is going to be it. On the town side, uh, we also had some disappointing news. Um, the, the grand list went up a half a percent. We had hoped it was going to go up one and a half percent. Um, you can see there the grand list for 2018, $7,462,230. That's one percent of the total property value in the town. <coughs> we estimated seven and a half, seven point, almost five, three million. <coughs> so, uh, we're below by um, a considerable amount, um, about one percent, nine tenths of a percent lower than we thought it was going to be. Um, there's a couple of things I talked to Dan Sweet today. Um, we didn't have too many. Um, we had three grievances. They made two minor adjustments, I believe, uh, that don't amount to a hill of beans in the grand scheme of things. Uh, the state helps with the um, assessment of electric utilities. So the electric utilities, uh, Green Mountain Power, there's two different um, lines. And last year, the value of the electric utility for Green Mountain Power was uh, over $32 million. Now it's uh, it's been dropped by 2.77 million to uh, 30 million, 30,000, uh, yeah, 30 million, 220, 30 million, 210 dollars, uh, 30 million, 210 thousand, 100 dollars, I'm sorry. So that's 1% of their value. And Dan isn't sure why that uh, number was dropped. Um, if we had that $2 million, we'd still be below our estimate, but would be about 9 tenths or 1% as opposed to 6 tenths of a percent up from last year. Uh, there were a few other ups and downs here and there, but we didn't make the grand list. Um, moving down the page, uh, the general fund 
$1,598,705, which includes all special articles, and then you see the highway fund and the library fund. And those total to three million four twenty four two eighty. dollars I'm gonna ask you to allow me to set the tax rate, however, on the three million three eighty six seven eighty. dollars um, You made a motion, Chris, at town meeting to add $37,500 to the budget to maybe sweeten the pot on 51 South Main Street. That didn't happen. Uh, it's not gonna happen. And there's really no reason to raise that money just to Sit, set it aside. So, so what we will do is take the three million three hundred and eighty-six thousand seven eighty, which is the total of the fifty-seven thousand dollars worth of special articles, excluding that uh, you made for the parking lot, plus the general fund, plus the highway fund, plus the library fund, and if you um, so we're raising we're raising about $61,000 more in taxes than we did last year. So we went up 1.83%, which is a little lower than the rate of inflation. Inflation was 2.1% uh, year over year going into the 1st of January. So if you look at the black line right in the middle where it says 2018 tax rate, you take that number 3,386,780, divided by the grand list 7462230 and it comes out to 45.38 cents um, last year when I did the calculation it was 44.83 cents so about 1.22 percent higher just on what the math is last year I recommended rounding down to 44 cents the select board said, no, let's round up to 45 cents. We need some additional money in our paving fund if we can. And with our fund balances and what we did for the budget this year, we, we, did, we did put more money in the paving budget this year. So I'm still going to recommend that we set a 45 cent municipal tax rate. Um, that's uh, 38 ten thousandths of a of a uh, dollar lower than um, what the math comes out to be. And if you take that 0 0.0038 and you multiply it by the grand list, uh, if we round down to 45 cents, we could have a deficit of $28,356 if everything all year long came out just right on the money. Um, we have a few places where we're going to get a little bit more money than we had budgeted. Uh, we're going to get about 6000 more in pilot money than we budgeted. We're going to get about $6,800 more in, um, in uh, current use money than we budgeted. I haven't got the forest and parks number yet, but I think we'll probably be a little bit on the plus side there. And you know, I'm not saying $28,000 isn't real money, but we can, if we end up the year $28,000 in the red, we're not going to die. You know, we're, it's, it's a manageable number. Right now, I, you know, I showed you the budget report at the last meeting, and our budget through half, half the year were a little better than we expected to be. Um, so, I think we can stick with our 45 cent tax rate. And, you know, if the school tax rate was staying flat, you know, maybe I'd say, well, let's take the additional, you know, 0 0.0038. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a higher increase than I think anybody was anticipating on the school side, especially given all of what we've been hearing uh, the last couple of weeks. So my recommendation is that you set the municipal tax rate at 45 cents and then um, establish the homestead rate at 161, that no greater than 161.83 and the non-residential rate at no greater than uh, 1.6013. And um, if you want to take it from there, ask questions, I'll be happy to help. But I think I've given you as, about as much information as I have. Yeah. Um, 
What's the, was there uh, any suggestion from Dan as to maybe why the grand list didn't uh, turn out as well as anticipated? Yeah, like I said, um, the um, I think there's two things. One, that 2.77 million that we lost on the Green Mountain Power, mm -hmm. you know, that's more than that's more than half of the, the almost half of the loss there. The other thing is that our common level of appraisal is creeping down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I think he's when he is. Um, out in the field, and when if people raise questions, he's tending to you know maybe drop it a little bit because what that is uh, well actually that's the wrong way. We're at 98 percent as opposed to 100 percent, so that would be that uh, that scratch what I just said there because it looks like overall we're a little bit under appraised because if we were at one. Um, then it would mean we're right on. And if we're at 98, that means they think there's more value that, that we should be taxing. So. It looked like last year we were a little bit over 100. But, um. Yeah, we may have been. Um, I quickly looked, Chris, you know, there's a few little ups and downs here and there. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say. Last year we were up a, a little bit more than 1%. Um, and this year, you know, earlier in the year, when, when I talked to him, there were things going on. And I, you know, I thought the one and a half was reasonable. In good years in the past, you know, we've budgeted two. Now, of course, the higher grand list gets, the harder it is to get, you know, to get a higher percentage because that's just a, a lot of uh, growth that you have to have. But I don't have. Uh, good reason except for the electric utilities, Chris. And that would come from, when you're saying Green Mountain Power, that would come from the dam? Yeah, there's, there's the dam, and um, that's where most of it is. Um, I'm sure there's taxes on there, you know, power yeah, poles and right. lines as well. But the, the vast majority of it, I'm sure, is from the generation facility. And, you know, we knew that it was going to go down a little bit. Dan has asked the state for some uh, explanation. Part of the explanation might be the fact that it's moving toward this, you know, run of river operation, that they, they can't store the water behind the dam and, you know, uh, make peak demand electricity anymore. They can basically, what comes in, they, you know, they got to keep a certain level on the dam and what comes in goes out. So they used to be able to, you know, uh, stack it up mm -hmm. a foot or two and then make power and, and bring it down a foot or two. So they had a, I think they had a, a two or a three foot head that they mm -hmm. could make peak, to, peak power on and they can't do that anymore. And that. See, I, I, I thought the discussion back when we had it about them, because they were still talking, are they still talking about re putting a different turbine in? Yeah, they've done that, I believe. Oh, they've done it. I believe that. And the gates have been repaired? No, the gates haven't been repaired yet. When the gates get repaired, then that's when they're going to just leave the summer pool. It'll be year-round at that pool. They won't drop it down in the winter. But I believe they're already operating on a runner river basis now, not a peak generation. So that's not as valuable to them, obviously, on a day like today. You know, if they knew this heat wave was coming, they would have right. yeah. stacked up that water over the weekend and then, you know, let it out. Uh, yeah, well, we knew where there was going to be an appraisal loss. Right, that. so they that may be part of that. But I, you know, so anyway. Yep. But from, from our perspective right now, I think you know, we're doing well enough with our budget that I am comfortable recommending that we stick with the 45 cents and at least we hold our portion, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, what is it, a dollar, two dollars, 50 cents, so, you know, it's pushing like, their 70% goes to education, right? 
Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I know that I had, when I st stopped in to see you there a while back, I'd mentioned uh, maybe getting a, you know, and, and I know this will be in the next few weeks here if you get a chance to uh, try to get some kind of a consensus because we've held, you know, if we hold this tax rate at 45 cents now, that would be three years in a row. And we know that can't last forever. Um, we know we've got responsibilities coming down the pike, and and I had suggested to you try to get some type of an idea of what, yeah, perhaps I'm, maybe next year's I'm, impact. I'm starting would be. to look at some of those things. You know, we know what the full year police contract will be next right. year. You know, so it'll be another hundred eighty thousand dollars or so over what we have this year. Um, so I'm I'm beginning that work. It'll okay. probably be into August maybe, you know, before I can do, Get a anything, handle on, yeah. do anything really um, substantive that we can talk about. But yeah, I'm starting to gather that information and, and look at things. So. You know, yeah, paving projects and whatever, um, yeah. how that's all going to be handled. Okay, well, um, so then we need a motion to uh, set the homestead tax rate at uh, Dollar sixty one eighty three. Yeah, no greater than. No greater than dollar sixty one eighty three. I think that's great enough. Uh, and a non residential tax rate at no greater than a dollar sixty thirteen. And a municipal tax rate at forty five cents. Somebody like to make that motion? I will make that motion. Okay. You second it, Nat? I second that. All right. Uh, before we leave this, um, there's just one minor other thing that we need to do. Down at the bottom of the page, <clears throat> um, you see in red there the people in town who live in the village that uh, won't have a village tax now. Uh, they're going to save 13 cents on their village tax, so there'll be, uh, there'll be still some people in the community that will be feeling that they're getting a break from what they paid last year. But at the very bottom there, you notice that the veterans, um, and mainly for Matt's benefit, um, the state law <clears throat> exempts the first $10,000 of um, a veteran's homestead from taxation. So if you're a, okay. a disabled veteran, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. So if you're a disabled veteran and you own a piece of property that's uh, $200,000, you get taxed on $190,000. Um, the town, um, a couple of years ago, it's probably more than five years ago now, um, I believe we exempt the first 30000 We voted to do that on our own. Uh, at town meeting a couple of years ago. Uh, and the state allows you to do that, but if you exempt more than 10,000, you have to make it up locally. So uh, down here where it says Veterans 2016, you can see last year there was $667,300 worth of um, property that was exempted by the town above the amount that the state allows for oh, exemption. Oh, over that 30. Over that. Yeah. So from the 10% up to 30, that, that's 667. So this year, the, the $10,000 10, the $10, worth of exemption that the state allows, you know, we don't have to make up, was valued at $288,800. That's not on your sheet. The, the um, veterans exemption above $10,000 that we do ourselves is this year it's 793100 793, There's a few more veterans who have become eligible for this. So uh, when you do the math, uh, last year the, the add-on rate was 0 .0014, and this year because um, you know, the grand list went up and the tax rate went up. Um, the, um, the, it's 0 .0017, which will be added to everybody's bill. That's the formula to make up that credit that the veterans get. 
Right. So you take the you take the exempt amount that's above the ten thousand dollars. So seven hundred ninety three thousand one hundred dollars. You multiply that by one percent, and then you multiply that by the homestead tax rate, and that equals twelve thousand eight hundred thirty four dollars. And you divide that into the grand list, and it's point zero zero one seven. So at the very bottom here, you'll see that all-inclusive um, in 2018, over on the right-hand side, the homestead tax will be 2.069, and the non-residential tax will be 2.053, and uh, one of them was up 3.15%, the other one was up 3.6%. So um, if it's all right, Mark, I'll just include that veterans yeah. exemption in your motion, okay? Sure. All right. Okay. Any further questions or comments? There is none. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. So we will be running our tax bills on Thursday, and uh, hopefully they'll be heading out in the mail, if not by Friday, certainly by the first of next week. So. Okay. Anyway. Discuss some penalties for late filing. Yeah, so when we all file our income taxes, if we live in Vermont and are declaring a homestead, we're supposed to do that by April 15th. And then there's other times during the year that you're considered late. Um, and when the legislature established the current uh, tax system that we have where there's um, two, two rates. The fear was that in the old days, the homestead rate was almost always lower than the non-residential rate. So um, there was a fear that people would be filing homesteads and it really wouldn't be. Um, so either way, you're supposed to declare your homestead, and it says the commissioner of the Department of Taxes shall provide a list of homesteads to each town listers by May 15th. The lister shall notify the commissioner by June 1st of any residents on the commissioner's list which do not qualify for homesteads. And then we go on. So the, the state has established a, a penalty, and it's really confusing. Um, and I'm just going to read this, read this to you. Uh, a couple of years ago, we didn't have a penalty, and uh, we forgot to set it. And then it was like, wow, uh, there were a lot of changes. Leanne can talk to you about all the downloads that you got from the state. And there's a lot of work to produce a, a, a substitute tax bill. Right? So it says, the commissioner shall notify the municipality and the municipality shall issue a corrected tax bill. And as may be determined by the governing body of the municipality, it may include a penalty of up to 3% of the ed education property tax if you fail to declare your homestead. But then it says, however, if the property incorrectly declared as a homestead, is located in a municipality that has a lower homestead rate than a non-residential rate, or if the uh, undeclared homestead is located in a municipality that has a lower non-residential rate than the homestead rate, seems like both things they're mm -hmm. saying there, <laughs> that you, um, <clears throat> the governing body may include a penalty of up to 8% of the education tax liability on the bill. And then it says, if the um, commissioner determines that somebody actually attempted to commit fraud this way, that the penalty is 100% of the education tax. If they didn't claim their homestead on purpose. Yeah, if, if, they, if they intended to commit fraud, and, and I don't know how one is, oh, well, he just kind of decided to see if he could get away with it versus, oh, he really, you know, right. tried to screw the system. 
Um, <clears throat> last year, we, the select board set penalties of 3% and 5%. And most of our people got, the ones who, who got this at all, yeah. got the 5% penalty. They were mostly people who should have filed homesteads and didn't. And, um, and they had to get the penalty. So now, these, these folks would be folks that, instead of <clears throat> filing as a homestead, they took advantage of the lower tax rate of the non-residential. Right. And for that, there was a 5% penalty. Right. Okay. But they didn't commit fraud. No, no. Otherwise, it would have been 100%. Yeah. The commissioner gets to determine who, do, who commits fraud. So we, we talked about this last year. To me, the, for, for this, this isn't like paying your taxes late. And if you pay your taxes late, there's an 8% late penalty and a 1% interest, and that applies to everybody. Um, this one, if people really didn't do it on purpose, and some people, you know, we have, Karen showed me a bill the other day that I think we had six changes of the same bill. Mm -hmm. You know, it was not declared as a homestead, then it was, and then it came through, and it didn't have its state payment on it, and then they applied the state payment and added a penalty, and then the person appealed that, and then in the end, the commissioner took the penalty away completely. So, I've always said, and I argued uh, to the legislature, that why can't this just be a flat fee? Mm -hmm. I mean, why does it have to be, you know, if you have a $10,000 tax bill and you have a $4,000 tax bill and you forgot to declare your homestead, why is it 5% and 5%? It, it costs us maybe 50 bucks to, you know, go through the process of changing it. So. Um, the guy from Nemrick says that we should do what the state allows, three and eight. And he said, that way, between the two, you'll cover your time. I tried to, I didn't think to ask early enough today, and uh, I called Karen after the, after the 4.30, and I, I thought she told me how much we collected in these penalties last year, but she said, no, it was Michelle, and Michelle had already gone. Um, so last year, the select board set 3 and 5%. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if we really think it should be a flat fee as opposed to a percentage, and the state law doesn't allow us to have a percentage, um, why don't we just set it as 3% for both of them? Um, do, we, do we cover our expenses That's at 3%? It's hard to say. I don't. I, I can't answer. Because I, I guess that would be my only question with it. I I, yeah. I understand uh, the the line with the latitude, but if if it takes that that split of three and five in order for us to cover cover our expenses for right because it's that. it's not but the responsible taxpayer's responsibility to pay the burden of somebody else's mistake but uh, i guess my my concern is that um for doing the same thing mm -hmm. one way or the other and and you know i've read this a lot of times and i still but one of them says the municipality shall include a penalty of up to 3%, and the other one says of up to 8%. So we could have it 1% each, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure where we're gaining, and in, the, in fairness, if we set one at 3% and one at 5%. It doesn't cost us any more to move your bill from non-residential to a residential and yours from residential to non-residential. I mean, but one of you is going to pay 5% if, from what we did last year. One of you is going to pay 5% and one of you is going to pay 3% and you've cost us the same amount of money. So maybe you want to make it both 
Well, one of them can only go up to 3%. So you can't make it any, right. if you want to be fair, I mean, if you want to be equal. You're going to say split the difference and make it four, but, but yeah. one of them what, can only be a three. Uh, what is the 3% one? What are, what are the, okay. what's the criteria for that? If the property identified in the declaration of this section is not the taxpayer's homestead, or if the owner of a homestead fails to declare a homestead, the commissioner shall notify the municipality and the municipality shall issue a corrected tax bill that will include a penalty of up to 3% on the education tax of the property. However, if the property incorrectly declares as a homestead is located in the municipality that has a lower homestead rate, which we don't, we have a higher homestead rate. Yeah. For now. Um, However, the property incorrectly declared as a homestead is located in a municipality that has a lower homestead rate than a non-residential rate, or if an undeclared homestead is located in a municipality that has a lower non-residential rate than a homestead rate, I'm lost. You can it, it, really, it really sounds like if, if the rates are the same and you claim it's one and it's really the other, the 3% applies. And if you have differentiation in the rate at all, and you're making a claim that is going to be advantageous to you, that that up to 8% then applies. That's what I'm kind of hearing out of that. So it is really that 3% penalty is you labeled the barn the wrong way. Um, but there was no advantage to doing it doing it was wrong, here's your 3%. The other version is you're doing it to take advantage of the differentiation in the, in the rate. So for that, you get to pay even more. So, so the 3% penalizes you for screwing yourself, right? For you screwing yourself. For not being able to figure out what the heck you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 8% is if you intentionally tried to screw them. Well, not intentionally, because that would be fraud. That would be fraud, yeah. yeah. Anyway, if you want to do it three and five like we did last year, I can, you know. I, you know, I, I don't think this makes a ton of money one way or the other for us. I don't think so. And, and as long as it's covering yeah. our, our expense. Um, I'm not interested in making a ton of money. I'm no. just interested in what you, you just covered yeah. All right. our expense. And so <clears throat> keep it at three and five. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because, I, I mean, from... What I'm hearing and what my mind is putting together on it is there's somebody that's trying to take advantage of the system, they should pay a higher penalty. Right. Um, if, if, okay, yeah. rightfully so. Yeah. All right, so you made that motion? Yes. You I seconded, seconded it. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Hundred on a hundred, huh? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that's not today. Oh, mm -hmm. man. I guess so. <clears throat> uh, hundred on a hundred relay race. Um, it's a road race. It has been going on for the last 13 years. This will be 14. It is on Saturday, August 18th. And, um, they are running this year from Trap Family Lodge in Stowe to Okemo Mountain in Ludlow. And we'll run through 18 transition points along the way. Um, I think, you know, for the most part, they're on Route 100. They, um, they go down Stowe Street and then right. down Main Street. They, they do go down Stowe Street. Um, they don't really cause us any issues. They sometimes put a, a porta potty up in Waterbury Center someplace. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're going to have their transition point this year. I can't remember where it was last year, but they're going to have a transition point at the um, Hunger Mountain uh, Church. Yeah. So they're going to start at Tra Trap Family Lodge and then I guess the next. Yep. Runner will okay. meet yep. them at Hunger Mountain. Yep. They usually have their porta potties and stuff at that transition yep. point. They used to transition at Hope Davy yeah. Field years ago. Yeah. 
Uh, and then their next transition point is um, at Crossing Brook School in Duxbury. So, um, you know, it says they're going to have one vehicle per team plus a few volunteer vehicles passing through the town over, over the span of a number of hours. Uh, they will have traffic control as needed. They typically don't need much. Uh, they've been advised about the uh, Route 100 paving project. Uh, they're in contact with Barb. Um, they have uh, emergency medical teams that are available, and then they do come through after the race is gone and kind of police the town, and they'll pick up their signs and any other things. So uh, I don't see it's a big deal, and I would just ask if you would authorize it. Alrighty. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the 100 on 100 relay for Saturday, August 18th. We can wrap it up. I'll make a motion to approve the 100 by 100 relay for Saturday, August 18th. I'll second that. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 That's all I have. Early one for everybody. Motion to adjourn. I will so move. Aye, aye. <laughs> all in favor, say aye. aye. Thank you. Thanks, man.